Thomas Edison said that genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. His wordplay works through rhyme, but the reason his words parallel is the history of how we think about breath. Inspiration is a synonym for inhalation, a literal breathing in, but more often refers to an effect of revelation, truth, or beauty. Perspiration is sweat, metaphorically hard work. It's our skin's way of breathing through evaporative cooling. Transpiration, another word for perspiration, refers to the movement of water through plants. While when secrets breathe across their former barriers, we learn what has transpired. When you aspire, you breathe toward a hoped-for goal, your aspiration, while aspirated consonants release enough breath to blow out a candle when pronounced. Expiration is when one's breath goes out, the process of respiration forever ended. These words are not the result of any conspiracy, with lexicographers breathing together in whispers to give our language a half-hidden logical structure. But a natural consequence of the dominance of Latin as the spiritual and aspirational tongue of nearly two millennia of Europeans. European languages equate the concept of spirit with the physical breath because that's what classical Latin did, bringing us words like spiritual, spirituality, and sprite, and concepts like school spirit and free spirit. Scientific words derived from this root mostly have to do with breathing, from respiration itself, to a spirometer to measure breath, to a respirator to make hazardous air more breathable, to the spiracle through which some animals breathe, and also another meaning of the word spirit itself, distilled alcohol named for its vapors. The equation of life, spirit, breath, and wind is not unique to Latin. It is found across the world's religious traditions. Unsurprising is human life is impossible without breath. Hebrew has ruach for spirit, wind, and breath, and the common Semitic root gives us Arabic ruh for spirit and rih for wind. The Greek New Testament uses pneuma for spirit, especially the Holy Spirit. The same root is the source of pneumatics, pneumonia, and apnea. Sanskrit prana also unites the concepts of breath, spirit, inspiration, and life force. It is a central concept of yoga, and pran remains one of the words for life in some modern South Asian languages like Hindi and Bangla. Yoruba religion in West Africa and its diaspora has the term emi for spirit, while qi, the Chinese idea of life force, gives English words like qigong, aikido, and reiki, and forms compounds that mean everything from weather to fate in East Asian languages. All of these languages give this term both a spiritual and an earthly dimension, respiration and spirit together. Word roots are not perfectly predictive at first pass. Spiral and the multitude of shape-related terms it gives to mathematics and to scientific fields like biochemistry, botany, and astronomy are from an entirely different root meaning to turn. Yet an unfamiliar word spelled with S-P-I-R will almost certainly be from one of these two roots. You could just search a traditional print dictionary for a word's definition and its history, but the most interesting part in our hyperlinked world is often the vast sea of etymological connections that can bridge languages, help those who are behind build vocabulary faster, and even inspire greater wonder about the world and a desire to better understand it. That's what this series at Roots and Roots is all about. If you enjoyed this and want more videos about language history and more, please click the subscribe button.